So now we've looked at most aspects of the golden age of Weimar. We've looked at the economic side, we've looked at the social developments, and then tying into that we've looked at the cultural revolution that almost began during this time. And now this time we're going to have a look at the political developments because last time we touched on the politics of Weimar Germany, we saw that it was quite hostile, quite extremist, and we want to see if this has changed during the Golden Age. And we're going to split this video into sort of the positive aspects of the political system, which is here. And we're going to look at the negative aspects on the other side of the Reichstag here. Okay. So the positive aspects of the Weimar system. So there were no attempts to overthrow the government between 1924 and 1928. So this, this idea of political revolution... So there was the so yeah the idea of political revolution was lost at this time of political revolution was lost okay and that also suggests that there was a, a lack of support for extremism so the the, the extremist parties had little support Extremist parties had little support. Okay. And this is reflected in the fact that the Nazis lost a lot of support in elections during this time. So in Dece between December 1924 and May 1928, the two elections in those two uh, times, okay, Extremists lost support in the elections. The NSDAP only had 2.6% of the vote in 1928. Bear in mind what we do know from history already, that the Nazis end up taking over power within a few years after 1928. It does really beg the question of, of how it started so low. We've got such a low support for Nazi parties, okay? In 1925, President Ebert died, and Field Marshal uh, von Hindenburg was elected president. Okay, and Hindenburg carried out his presidential duties with absolute correctness. He was a stickler for um, following the book. And then, after 1924, members of the DNVP were willing to join coalitions. So we're starting to see a grouping of the centrist parties. So a grouping of the centrist parties. The centre parties. Okay. And the sort of centre to and centre left ish parties, okay. The nineteen twenty eight election, seventy six percent of the electorate supported pro Weimar parties. Okay. So this implies that 78% of people who voted in the 1928 election supported Weimar because they were supporting parties who supported Weimar, okay? And then in this election, we have what's known as the Grand Coalition of 1928, a coalition led by the SDP and comprised of quite centre and centre leftist parties so there was compared to earlier in um earlier oh what's happening here compared to earlier in the years in weimar we have quite a lot of partisan politics so partisan oh sorry we have a lot of bipartisan politics So partisan meaning um, quite aggressive, hostile, and like and didn't want to work together or anything. Bipartisan coming into an agreement, coming into unity to start to shape and mould the country by legislation, and that is what happened in the Grand Coalition of 1928. Now let's have a look at the negative aspects. There are significantly less negative aspects because this was seen as quite. Uh, an area, an era of political stability. Okay, so support for extremist parties did fall 
during this time. However, 25% of the electorate still wanted to see an end of Weimar democracy. Okay, so being anti-Weimar democracy wasn't seen as extremist. So anti-democracy wasn't extremist at this time. Was not extremist. So there wasn't any support for extremism. However, there was still support for the end of this democracy and maybe a restoration of the imperial Germany that came before it. But we also see... If there's a lack of Nazi support, okay, we still see a a, a relatively cons a significant rise in communist support, the KPD. They won 12.6% of the vote in the June 1924 election and 10.6% in 1928. You can argue that this is um, still quite a bit of support for an extremist party, but you could also argue that the KPD were even losing support. They didn't lose much support. They lose. They lost two percent of the support. However, that is still in a proportional system, a system of proportional representation. That was still relatively significant. Okay, the DNVP was very popular during this time, and they wanted to see a return of the monarchy. Okay, they weren't an extremist party, but they wanted an end to this Weimar democracy. So even if the Grand Coalition and political developments at this time were relatively strong and stable, you still see people who are quite anti-Weimar democracy. Okay, And it must be said that although support was low for the NSDAP in 1928, it did rise following the financial crash in 1929. Okay, So extremist support was low, so extremism was down. Extremism was down, uh, but it did rise after it. But it did rise after. It wasn't down for lo for long. Okay, okay. So overall, it could be argued that this was a relatively politically stable period for Germany. Okay, we can see. We can see a lot of um, people falling into the the pro Weimar party lines and voting for pro Weimar, while still a small percentage of people voting for the Communist Party and a little bigger percentage wanting to see an end to the Weimar democracy. <laughs>